shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring Namaste. Well, it's been a few days, but I've been really busy. <laughs> so here's the final uh, video on the Shodashi Mantra. So we're going over the Panchadashi Mantra, the 15-syllable mantra that is the heart of the Maha Shodashakshara Mantra. And this part of the mantra, these two, three lines, introduce some more bijas in addition to the ones that we covered before. Shring, ring, kling, aing, sao, and in. <clears throat> so these bijas are ka, meaning Brahma, e, meaning Saraswati, i, meaning Lakshmi, la, for Indra, sa, for Vishnu, and ha, Shiva, Akasha, space, or the sun. The meaning depends on the context, so it can shift. So Panchadasha means 15, and this mantra has 15 bijas, so it has, it's called Panchadashi, and it's to the goddess, so the feminine ending is used. So each line is called a kuta. A kuta means like a residence, a, a place to stay. And the three kutas are Vagbhava kuta, Kamaraja kuta or Madhya kuta, and Shakti kuta. And these three kutas represent Lilambika's whole form. Vagbhava kuta represents Lalitambika's face. Kamaraja Kuta represents her torso from neck to hips. And finally, Shakti Kuta represents her legs and feet. This is one of the reasons why Panchadashi Mantra is so powerful. In fact, it's so powerful that it's never given directly in the scriptures. It's always given in some cleverly encoded form. Uh, it's encrypted within the Sanskrit. I've found two instances of this so far. One is in the Saundarya Lahari by Adi Shankaracharya. And the other one is in the Mahanirvana Tantra, which is going to be the subject of the next series. <laughs> so in both cases, the mantra is encoded very cleverly in a Sanskrit verse. And unless you knew certain things, you would not be able to extract the mantra. Actually, the mantra is passed by initiation only. That's why you're watching this, right? <laughs> so, Vagbhava Kuta consists of five bijas. Kae i la ring. Madhya Kuta consists of six bijas. Hasakaha la ring. And Shakti Kuta consists of four bijas. Sakala ring. So notice that the short bijas like sa, ka, la, i, yeah, they are half a beat, and ring is a full beat. So the rhythm is very important. Yeah. A and e are long, so it's ka, a, e, la, ring. Hasaka, ha, la, ring. Saka, la, ring. And it has a specific rhythm within the uh, framework of the bijas. So before I demonstrate the proper rhythm in the chanting process, uh, let's talk about the meaning of the bijas a little more. The first kuta has five bijas. Kae i la ring. All three kutas end with ring. And this is a special meaning of ring called rileka. A lot of importance is attached to this huh? rileka, which is also called maya bija. <clears throat> In other words, <clears throat> this is the uh, root of the mind. Rileka. 
Uh, the first mind or the first thought, ring, is for bliss. Bliss is the first desire. So it's called Kama. And, and Lord Brahma is called Ka uh, because he is the creator and he is acting, he's driven by this original desire, desire for bliss. So then the Vakbhava Kuta, the middle Kuta, is also known as Agni Kuta, indicating Lalitam because Jnana Shakti. She has Itcha Shakti, which is the desire to create and enjoy, Jnana Shakti, which is, of course, the power of knowledge and consciousness, realization, and Ananda, uh, Ananda Shakti, which, of course, is the bliss that everybody wants. <laughs> So, Ka, as I mentioned, means Brahma, the creator. A means Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, Jnana, and realization. E means Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, plenty, affluence, money, profit, all those things. And finally, La means Indra. La, Indra is the king of heaven. He controls the weather. He controls a lot of what we call politics, power, and like that. And finally, the ring at the end, in this case, indicates the merger of Shiva and Shakti. When the merger of Shiva and Shakti occurs, the creation disappears. Even consciousness disappears. And all that's left is pure, unconditioned awareness, awareness of awareness. And this, when Shiva and Shakti are one, is the highest state of enlightenment. Then they separate, and the creation is born. Space, time, objects, movement, uh, action, reaction, you know, it's a whole package deal. Everything comes out with their, at the moment of their separation. And this is called the Mahatattva, or the original material substance. So she evolves this material substance into a whole, you know, unlimited variety of forms and activities in time. But then at the end, when they merge back together, uh, she devours time. Time is Kala. So she is Kali. And this is why the goddess Kali is exhibited as a terrible form wrathful deity and uh, at the end of the creation when it's being subsumed back into its source she devours time and destroys it there's no more time time is finished so then she merges into a formless form and that formless form unites with shiva and that's Brahman. So you see, all these stories are like metaphors. Uh, what the Buddha did it was strip away all the anthropomorphic metaphor and just leave the naked emptiness, which is impossible to describe, of course. So he described around it, he talked around it. This is his apophysis and uh, his his uh, speaking by not speaking. It's a very Buddhist concept, you know. Uh, so the Buddha is talking about the same exact state, but he's using negative language and he's circumlocuting the actual topic. The actual topic in all Buddha sutras is Nirvana, Nibbana in Pali. So this is the same state as described in this mantra, uh, which is why the tantra that gives it is called the Maha Nirvana Tantra, curiously enough. Okay, so the, the bija ka is the root of the kama bija kling. Sae i la ring. And 
Ka also gives peace and prosperity because Lord Brahma is the mode of passion. So the next bija, E, prevents misfortunes. E, being representing Lakshmi, gives affluence, wealth, and all enjoyable things to the sadhana. La gives victory. Uh, Indra is always victorious in his battles with the demons. So the first four bijas, ka e i la ring, give peace, prosperity, prevent misfortunes, give auspiciousness and victory like Indra. So then the final ring, known as hrileka, hrileka actually means imprinting the heart. Huh? like stamping the heart with the stamp of the goddess. So the significance of this line is to imprint her qualities in the heart of the sadhaka, the person who's chanting. Hring is actually meant, <coughs> is actually made up of 12 letters. Hring is very deep. Ha plus ra plus E plus M mm plus the Bindu, ing. But Bindu is not just one thing. Bindu is a combination of nine things. Arda Chandra, the crescent moon shape, like on top of Om. Rodini, one who overpowers. Huh? Nada, the nasal sound, ing, mm, ing. Mm represented by the crescent shape used as, as an abbreviation for this uh, dot in the bijas. Nadanta, the end of the pronunciation. Nad means sound, anta means the end. Shakti, the goddess form of the supreme. Vyapika, who is visible everywhere as forms and even as space and time. Samana, in one point, all together, and Unmani, to be one with God. So this is actually a shloka. Huh? Arda Chandra Rodhini Nada Nadanta Shakti Vyapika Samana Unmani. So the meaning is that this crescent moon shape, uh, indicating drawing out the nasal termination gives victory to the sadhaka represented by the nasal sound ing, huh? the dot at the end of the pronunciation shring ring kling ing huh? and ing the shakti the goddess form of the supreme who is visible everywhere huh? is in their present in that one point and this point, when realized, makes, gives you oneness with God. This is the meaning of Bindu, that little dot. <laughs> so this little dot is very important, and the proper pronunciation of the mantra or the bija is also extremely important. It empowers it. So, to, oh, to continue, the second bija, or Kuta, is Kama Raja Kuta, or Madhya Kuta. And this is the goddess's form from neck to hip. So this has the highest number of Kutas, of Bijas, sorry. <laughs> Hasa Kaha La Hring. So out of these, Ka, La, and Hring have already been discussed, uh, leaving the two new ones, Ha and uh, Sa. So the first ha means Shiva, hasaka. And the second ha, halahring, means akasha or space. Uh, this is also from Saundarya Lahari, verse 32. Uh, but uh, the uh, Shankaracharya thinks that in this case it means the sun. The sun is the lord of space. So, okay, <laughs> it's close enough. And sa 
in this context means Vishnu. Vishnu is the maintainer of the universe. He's also an emanation from Shakti. So if anything in the creation starts going awry, uh, a, an incarnation of Vishnu will emanate from Shakti uh, and then he will set it right so that the universe continues to exist. So, Sa also means the air. So now we have time, space, air, the sun, you see, everything is in this bija, and this is in the torso of the goddess. And finally, hring refers again to the union of Shiva and Shakti. So, the uh, Brahma, Ka, is mentioned in the first kuta. In the second kuta, Sa, Vishnu is, is mentioned, and also Ha, Shiva. So, this form, this kuta, is supposed to be contemplated from the Anahata Chakra, the heart, up to the Sahasra, uh, the lotus, thousand petal lotus uh, chakra. This is her. So this, this has to be uh, moved in a specific way and that Kundalini Yoga is described uh, in, in capsule form in the Saundarya Lahari, but in more detail in the Maha Nirvana Tantra, along with all the magical ceremonies that give you the power. So we're going to do that next. Uh, so this is, the, the creation represents her head. The sustenance of the universe represents her torso. And then finally, the, the last kuta, the Shakti kuta, represents dissolution. It only has four bijas, sahka la ring. Okay, so this is like the feet of the goddess, the legs and feet of the goddess. So for her, it's very easy to dissolve the cosmos. As Kali, like I said, she just devours time and it's finished, it's gone. Uh, so, of course, there's more, <laughs> there's lots more. And we could go on and on and on with this, but the important thing is that you should practice it. So I want to go over the practice very briefly and uh, illustrate some of these points. First of all, you should have a mala, chanting beads. There are 108 beads plus the head bead, which means 109 beads. We don't use the head bead for counting. It's simply to signal the termination of one round of the entire mala. So holding the mantra, uh, sorry, holding the mala <laughs> so that it's draped across the middle finger. You don't touch it with the index finger, huh? but the thumb sits on top. And if you want more tactile engagement, you can roll the bead between your thumb and middle finger. Uh, and then you complete one mantra, and then with the om of the next mantra, you go to the next bead, and you roll on that bead until the mantra is complete, and so on. So, the mantra has um, a specific rhythm, which is very, very important. I cannot overstress, you know, besides the pronunciation, the correct pronunciation with the normal, normal tasination, <laughs> the nasal termination <laughs> of the bindu is very very important so now i'm going to illustrate the uh, proper chanting rhythm of this mantra i'm going to do three or four mantras and uh, so you'll please listen very carefully Aum, shring, ring, cling, ein, Ing ring shring, ka e i la ring, ha saka ha la ring, saka la ring, sa ho ein kling ring shring. Aum, shring ring kling ein sa ho, ing ring shring, ka e i la ring, Ha saka ha la ring, saka la ring, sao ho ein kling ring shring. 
So that's it. If one chants one million times this mantra, he is guaranteed liberation. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung. Buddha Sharanai. <laughs>